uh, you were here last year, and I think you said one of the big use cases last year was in the healthcare space. So what's changed from last year's barrel leads to this? What, what are you seeing that's, that's uh, new, that's emerging, that's altering because of governance and ethics or, or other technology? Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily because of governance and ethics, but I would say the most common thing that we're seeing is just a continued, a continued focus and pickup on those areas that are, um, I like to say, highly supported by AI. Right? You know, when you have kind of low-level functions like data entry and, and things of that nature, you know, a, um, a sale like initial like you know sales development uh, stuff of that nature, like all of that has been we've seen more and more pickup on. So customer service, you know, SDS people, um, you know, a, a advisory, like all of this is stuff that is enhancing or has the capacity, I, wish, I should say, to enhance what it is that people do kind of at a, an entry level in a business. And I think that that has continued to pace. Um, like that's the most common use case that we are seeing by far. You know, I'd say, Matt, um, you know, in the last year, or at least in the last two years, we've had several new regulations come out. Um, in the U.S., can, um, California seems to lead the way. Obviously, as a Canadian startup, uh, we see them being highly activist. Um, the EU artificial intelligence regulation just came out, kind of officially put a stamp on it uh, earlier this summer. And you know, you want to put yourself to sleep, go and read this document, but understand the key parts of it are about high-risk systems that an inferential AI system, not Gen AI, Gen AI only, but systems that have or purport to have the ability to make decisions or infer by themselves. Those that would potentially impact another human in a way that would violate some ethic or some law are now put into a bucket. Once that happens, you need to register the system. The system needs to be documentable, explainable, and banks, insurance companies, large institutions have to pick a stance for this. Normally in this market, what we see is companies kind of retrenching a little bit, spending time saying, I'm going to be a little bit slower. I need to have systems that are easier to explain before I'll step in. So, you know, while it's exciting, we get excited on the tech side and building new things. I love the first panel that was here this morning. And they talked about all the potential for AI, what we have to realize in the market is that folks in your industry, in the investment industry, have to be looking at whether or not we actually can accomplish what we want to because of these regulations. It's a lot stronger now than it was a year ago. Yes, uh, last year when I was sitting here, I had uh, suggested that AI was going to be a commodity. At that time, we were only talking about chat GPT predominantly. And uh, since then, there's been a proliferation of foundational models today. There's various quality of choices of models we use. Uh, we ch well, last year when we were here, we were talking about prompt engineering, and uh, that was a new career area. Uh, pretty quickly, prompt engineering has been taken over by AI today. Gen AI has taken prompt engineering. And lastly, there was very little mention of small language models. Uh, today. Uh, small language models work in concert with large language models, and AI is beginning to self-regulate. Organizations that are building AI systems are now using small language models to enforce governance and regulations. 